Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 9 of Night Call, and we're going to drive the two ladies again, so let's see if they met another donor or something. I mean, they pay a lot, so we need it. You recognize the two passengers getting into your cab. Yes, I do. A few days earlier, you drove them home. They were on their way back from a date with a potential donor. You start to cap after a moment of uncertainty. They recognize you too. Oh, well, that's a coincidence. We were just talking about you the other day. You were talking about him, not me. She leans towards you. Lucy was so embarrassed about that conversation we were having. You must have heard everything. Nothing to be embarrassed about. It really wasn't. We had far more uncomfortable conversations so far. I mean... And that was just our first drive of the night, I think. The younger passenger is clearly relieved. Thanks. Sometimes we just forget you are there. It really wasn't very polite of me. Don't worry about it. She gives you a smile. We've just had another date. Speaking of which... Emily. What? We heard, he heard the beginning of the story. He wants to find out what happened. I do. Stop it, you're going to make him feel uncomfortable. Not at all, I'd like to hear about it. I mean, that sounds a bit nosy, but... The older passenger begins talking quickly, eyes shining, voice a little slurred. She's been drinking again, oh. Uh, the guy tonight was gorgeous. Extremely good looking, but extremely stupid too. Although not like the last guy. True, it's funny how people can be both dumb and different at the same time. It's almost fascinating, really. Almost is right. They both burst out laughing. I didn't like the way he was coming on to us. In the first place, it's his reproductive cells we are interested in, not his pretty face. It was as if, as if he wanted to get into bed with both of us. As if? No, that's definitely what he was trying to do. He was dying for a little threesome. They exchange a brief look, can hardly contain their laughter. Still, it's incredible. We had briefed him a little before. He knew that. He knew why we were meeting him. It was all very clear. No innuendos. It was so awkward when he talked about insemination by, by hand. He called it natural insemination, I think. The younger of the two sighs. It's a pity, really. The first guy was too proud to share his genes, and the second was too busy thinking about his dick. He sure was handsome. Can you imagine if our child gets looks like that? Yeah, but that's not what really counts. Sure, but it does help. Uh, yes, it does, definitely. A pause. Our kid will be kidnapped in two seconds flat. They laugh heartily. <laughs> Another pause, you've almost reached your destination. The older of the two women leans towards you. Do you have any children? Leave him alone. Please, I'm just asking him a question. Do you have any children? No. She seems disappointed and takes it up again. Would you choose a partner according to the babies you may have together, if you're straight, that is? Her wife rolled her eyes. You can be so embarrassing. No, I definitely wouldn't choose a partner thinking, I don't like him, but our kids would look good. I definitely wouldn't do that. Ah, darn. So much for my theory. Her wife leans towards you. Thank you for not engaging. Again, my apologies. Smile. The younger passenger gives you a tense smile. So what's the verdict on uh, Phil? That was his name, right? Right, Phil. What do you say? Her partner takes a moment to consider. I like him better than Damien, so long as he doesn't get too... bold. Oh, Damien. We heard of that name before today. I prefer Damien. A perfect idiot, but at least he has a brain. The younger woman screws up her eyes. That's not how I would have put it. You have to admit that Phil does have perfect features. Our daughter will be gorgeous. 
or sun. Uh, yes, right, or sun. You park in front of the women's building. The younger of the two pays the fare. The older woman gives you a wink in the rearview mirror. Come on, just between you and me, what do you think? Are jeans and all that such a big deal? Her partner opens her eyes wide. Please, just stop. Come on, you can tell me. There's nothing to worry about. I won't say anything to that woman. That woman has a name. And she'd like you to lay off the poor taxi driver who didn't ask for any of this. <laughs> She's obviously had too much to drink. Oh. She's not bothering me. Mm, let's just say that. Her wife drags her out of the cab. <laughs> Fine, you win. You're a certified pain in the ass. The younger woman gives her partner final yank and slams the door behind her. <laughs> oh. She makes a, a gesture with her hand, both goodbye and apology. Aw, oh, they're nice. Ooh, and they tipped very well. Thank you very much. I like driving them, they're nice. So who's next? Did we drive her before? I've seen her picture a lot, so... Maybe I just, we just never drove her, or maybe we did. Who knows? No, we didn't. Oh well. My poetry needs a car ride. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> that sounds tough. Okay, well she does pay a bit, so... The woman getting in your cap looks frantic. I've lost my inspiration. Every last drop of it. Come on, drive. You throw her very skeptical looks in a rearview mirror. I'll tell you when to stop. I have to... I am seeing... A stream. Dead. A billabong. A... She stops talking. You hear a low, guttural sound coming from her throat. A mantra. <laughs> a billabong. Everything alright? She looks as if she could kill you. Okay, sorry. Shh. She closes her eyes. You've had about enough of her tone. <laughs> Show some respect. Okay, uh, let's just say nothing. We shouldn't have asked her in the first place. Billabong. I must find a billabong. Do you have an address for me? <laughs> an address? How terribly conventional. She takes a minute to focus. Does time ask the sea to slow down its waves, huh? I just want to know where I'm driving you. Oh, I just see she won't pay me. Because money would be too conventional. She inhales, closes her eyes and focuses. Her voice drops, becomes more intense. A billabong. A dead river. There's one right below us. Drive, drive, I say. Well, yeah, whatever. As long as you pay me, you start driving. A few minutes go by before you realize your passenger is making guttural sound. The sound resonates with the hum of the engine. Once in a while she changes notes, modulating and playing with the harmonics. Suddenly she shouts, Turn left! <laughs> then abruptly, as if she were following the path she alone could see, Go down the boulevard! You drive for a few minutes aimlessly. <laughs> oh, I hope you're paying. And back your passenger is still singing. The meter is running, the kind of ride that puts you out of sorts. Who knows when it will end? The passenger squeals. Stop! Right here! Not a bit further! You break. <laughs> yes. Yes! She whistles a high, loud note. The billabong runs just beneath us. Its water flows no more. The black stream from my vagina has stopped short. Oh no. Get out of my car. The rumble of revolution, the water flows no more. All that remains is to clear away the remains. You stop the engine. Silence fills the cab. Your passenger's low voice and the scratch of her pencil on the paper are hypnotizing. Really, she's writing? How many rivers have run dry? The water has left its bed and flows no more. You feel something vibrate beneath you. Probably the metro. <laughs> How I long to sculpt the clay and the mud of life in this water, then flows no longer. 
Except the metro doesn't run this late at night. Oh wow, are we really feeling magic? I plunge my calves in this water that flows no longer. I am calmed and refreshed by its coolness. She squeals so loudly it makes you jump. She then returns to a simpler, more natural tone. Thank you. This poem has been years in the making. I was only missing a few lines until tonight. I sensed the billabong I needed while walking down the street like a Sharon. A muse. She opens her eyes. You? When you're driving alone at, like, at night like this, what moves you the most? Uh... The lack of silence. <laughs> um, I'm never alone. Yeah, no, most of the time I'm really not alone. I'm driving crazy people like you around. She shuts her eyes. Well, of course, true solitude does not exist. Simply pronouncing the word solitude proves we are not alone because someone is listening. I like that idea. I walk in the night on water that flows no longer. At my side are those who saw it run. A pause. Superb. A second later, she has left the cab. Oh, I hope you pay. I knew I would find my inspiration in the path to the billabong. She freezes. Your color is marble. Official sides, whatever that is. I mean, I know a lot of colors, but I never heard this one. Never forget this. Uh, okay, I will. She says nothing more, passes you her fare through the window and walks away with purpose. You sigh and drive away. Oh well, at least she paid a lot. Thanks. Okay, so will we be able to drive one last person? Okay. I think we never really met him because we were always interrupted by ghosts or... I don't know, a bakery on your right is lit up. Two bakers are smoking in a doorway. Oh well, it's early enough for them to start their day again, I guess. Ooh! He plays good too. Peter Covello as DJ Watson. Oh, he's a DJ. Okay. What do you have to tell us? The door opens and your passenger collapses into the back seat. His eyes are hidden behind a pair of large dark glasses. His clothes reek of sweat and booze. A clubber. He mumbles his destination. You start driving. A few words are exchanged. The weather, taxes, traffic. Then you can tell, then you can tell it's coming. The inevitable conversation about the killer. Yes, tell me information. Some bits of information, rumors, things overheard. You make a mental note of what you've heard. Who knows, it might come in handy. Your mind wanders. Your eyes vaguely can see, scan the store windows. The sodium light coming off the street lamps feels like it's dripping into your brain. You're falling asleep. You need a bit of music to keep you awake. Hey, no, I can't fall asleep. Come on, I'm working. Let's ask... No, let's just turn the music on. I don't know. You turn the radio on, pressing on the dial to find a station you like. 80s rock ballad, too soft. Behind you, your passenger is snoring, barely, but you can hear him. <laughs> a tonal classical music sounds like the orchestra is badly tuned. Rai, not tonight. A female poet being interviewed about her latest book. You recognize the inimitable voice of one of your passengers. Oh no, it's her. An ad interrupts the torrent of words and you change the station. Classical music again, the flute grates on your ears. Oh, we're almost there. Electronic music, you like the rhythm but just aren't in the mood. Stop. You lift your hand from the dial, the music plays on. Not bad. Turn it up so I can hear better. Uh, I didn't want to wake you. His voice sounds like it's coming from a deep cavern. I wasn't sleeping, just sobering up. He leans forward. Not bad at all. You hear the touch of an accent, probably an American, but someone who's lived most of his life in France. Leave it on until they say the musician's name. The music continues. There's something turning in the background, a persistent melody that gets higher and higher. Your client mumbles. I bet. The song is coming to an end and the announcer in a piercing foghorn voice throws out the name of a DJ you've never heard of. DJ Blunt. I knew it. You like his stuff? 
Uh, yeah, it's a good product. But it's pretty conventionally structured, but it's super popular. These Snickers. Still. I thought, I taught that dude everything he knows. Everything. In 94, at a party at the Rex Club, there was this kid who started buying me rounds. He waves his hand around. A kid, no older than 17, thought he was hitting on me. He chuckles. He would have been disappointed. He shakes his head. Uh, no, he wanted me to teach him how to spin. I told him no, but you can watch. And that's exactly what he did every week until we moved to the Osiris. He sold X to pay his way in. He briefly snickers. And now he's on the radio. Silence fills the cab, weighted silence. You can tell your passenger's mind is spinning. You know what he did this summer? He was the opener for the soccer championship at Stade de France. It was huge. Wonder what people would think if, he, if they knew he was selling drugs at 17. He lowers his voice a bit. If they only knew. Your passenger clams up. Mm, I guess I should keep my eyes on the road, but I guess we won't do make an accident. I want to watch him. What does he do? You stare at your passenger and notice little details revealing how old he must be. The thinning hair on top of his head. The creases in his forehead. His sworn blazer that he can't quite fasten anymore. We ran into each other in Ibiza four or five years ago. You almost jump at the sound of his voice. He was spinning in his little club. Yeah, really little, but it was something. He totally ignored me, of course. Even with those dark glasses, you can see how angry he is. DJ motherfucking cunt. He suddenly starts waving his arms around. He rummages through his pockets as he says, Ugh, your radio. C can it take a flash drive? You glance at your radio. You don't really know what he's talking about. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, uh, no worries. He lays his phone in the space between the two front seats. Listen to this. It's what I play tonight. It's mine. He sets his phone to play. But, you know, people were barely dancing. A drum machine playing a hard-edged beat in the background. They were talking, taking each other's pictures. Four notes start to dance in a cab. They barely touch, never kiss anymore. Perfect dance beat becomes progressively audible. All of that? Purely electronic crescendo plays. It's over. There's a break in music, synthesized strings calm the song down without slowing it down. At least... The song is getting intense again, explodes as your passenger drifts off. I got people dancing. The song keeps going for another minute. Then stops, your passenger doesn't budge. You drive to the rhythm of his snoring, the sound fills the cab. Ideas are bouncing through your head like they do every time you find yourself alone. This guy in the backseat is too old to be young. You look at your own hands, they look like they're suddenly aging in time lapse. You close your eyes a second. Only a second. When you open them, you've reached your destination and have pulled over to the sidewalk. You tap your passenger's knee and he wakes with a start. Shit, yeah. We're here, sir. Uh, yeah, great. He rummages through his pockets and hands you a few rumpled bills for fear. Thanks, I hope you liked it. Silence. The music, I mean, my music. The song I played you. I should have been in the spotlight, you see. You see? Fifteen minutes of fame. Just a minute of... He stifles a burp. Do you hear her mumble as he leaves the taxi? Those whiskey and orangeinas really screw with my system. You see him stagger towards his building. It takes him several tries to get the door open. <laughs> he finally disappears inside. You heave a long sigh. Okay, come on. Oh, well, he didn't really tip generously, but it's something. We made a lot of money today. We did make a lot of money. Oh, yeah, we saw Ludwig again.
I helped Carlo lie to his wife. Yeah, I feel bad about that. I wanted to explore this path. I did fall asleep, oh no. Well, we, we're both still alive, so lucky us, I guess. So that was it, that was night five. Let's go back home again. Let's see if we got any new clues or what our new clues are. Okay, this will kind of mess up my whole order of episodes, but you know, we're gonna take a look at our board now because this episode isn't going for on for too long. So, you take a few minutes to update your board with your new clues. You're suddenly overcome with the desire to sleep. You close your eyes, press your fingers to your eyelids, and let out a yawn. You glance at your bed and get to work. Okay, so what did we hear? Okay, so the victim number one was a great football coach. But he was protected to this guy. Hmm. Victim number one, the molester, was never arrested. Yes, we heard that. I mean, we get more and more on him, too. Hmm. A molester that was never arrested. I mean, wasn't his first case about a child molester, too? Yes. I mean, there must have been a lot of time in between, but it... It could, like, mean, like, memory-wise that he kind of hears about or catches wind of some child molesting football coach and he's reminded of his first case and he makes him his first victim. Wait a second, though. The autopsy report of victim number three said there was no sign of violence, but it also says here that the killer fought with victim number three. Killer knew the victims, okay. Killer left message and shock on first three crime scenes. Hmm, these clues we got from the from this guy who works at the stadium, but what was it that we just received from our passenger? It is kind of messy. The whole I, I like the whole idea of the board thing. Um, with all those pins and so on, but it is a bit messy and it's really hard to, to clean up. Okay, well, I guess it's everything that we have for today. We can't look at anything either because we read it all. <sighs> okay, well then, let's end the night then, I guess. With a heavy hand, you wipe your tired face. You lie down on the open sofa bed. Okay, I think this repeats itself every every day, so... Oh, well, you open one eye. You slept badly. Sometimes you're so tired you can't seem to get any rest. You'd like to understand how that's even possible. You get up quickly. And a few minutes later, you're outside of your studio. Okay, it's night six, so I mean, we're getting close, and... I still, I feel unsure. <laughs> Oh no, she ate her again. No. And that's Avi. Sorry, Avi, but I can't drive you anymore because you never give me money. Okay, so we're gonna start night six in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.